So we can try a locating ritual if we could, if we want to try to get our hands on the body with nobody looking. First things first. <laughs> that would be the first thing. <laughs> Figure out how to kill the thing. Although, I mean, I sort of think, well, if it's a god, like, doesn't it belong to be here? Can we maybe strike a deal? Stop killing people? Sure, you just have to uh, challenge them to something. And then win. We do have that belt buckle. Well, either way, you're fucked. Uh, you can get access to the body, say that you're just following up on a tip from earlier in the day and you want to check the body for consistencies of the story. You get your scrap of flesh. But where do you guys do this? Let's do the ritual at a daycare. <laughs> Look at Eric, we could do it in the back seat of the car. No. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man, I was homeless for a while. There's lots of places you can go where people don't look. Uh, any sort of industrial area that's closed down for the day. You can find an abandoned warehouse somewhere. Graffiti all over the place. Half the windows broken out. Yeah, I'm sure we can find in our budget. So you get what you're going to need for the spell, which is uh, some common things. You got to make a run to the grocery store. You get yourself some some Epsom salt. Uh, you do need a map of the area. Uh, some type of accelerant, usually lighter fluid, something to light it with, but you smoke her anyways. And then uh, on the center of the map, you draw the symbols radiating around Orange County. You draw your <laughs> symbols. You've done this before. Is this the one uh, ritual where you light the map on fire and it leaves one section? Correct. Do you complete the ritual it takes about five minutes of chanting and uh, lighting things on fire and preparing things the little section of flesh glows bright before incinerating itself and then lighting the map on fire which uh, then burns in an odd fashion because you think it would burn equally but no it doesn't everything burns except a little tiny square of uh, there's a little junction and there's uh, a building there an internet search of that address reveals uh, an abandoned boxing gym Boxing. That makes sense. Old Gerald Conway did some amateur boxing in his youth. <laughs> it's not relevant, really. I'm not going to box this guy. You're going to box that guy. <laughs> I might. <laughs> Give me my belt buckle. My championship belt buckle. You can't buckle. box that guy. I'm going to box that guy. Uh, All right. So now we know where he is. Now we just have to find out how to murder him. How about we just show up to his place and we just start telling really cool stories and one-upping him all the time and just playing the one-up game and just making him really <laughs> jealous of how cool we are and we just vouch for each other. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> That's how we beat him. Oh man, you made like three, two sacrifices here. Shit, we've made three. Hell, we sacrificed five cops just a couple, like a month ago. So it's a murdering contest you want. <laughs> how many medical examiners you banged this month? Got you beat on that. It's not over. <laughs> it's not over. <laughs> For either of us. I don't know. I think uh, maybe we should head towards the gym, uh -huh. being proxy of it. Yeah. Okay. At least we can scope it out and see if we catch him leaving. The pro good thing with gods in the modern days is that they're not that, they're more powerful than us, but they're not generally all seeing and mighty. We're not talking about Zeus here. We're talking about part of his squad. <laughs> they stood in attendance at Zeus's throne and formed part of his retinue. They were literally part of Zeus's retinue. His entourage. So, yep. <laughs> he must miss the glory days. Or holes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a competition. It is. <laughs> it is. Clearly. No, I'm going to say it to him like at least three times. You make your way down to the area. It's a shitty part of town. It's kind of like Detroit's not such a bad place to go if you know where not to go. Well, this is where you're not supposed to go in Orange County. Great. But if you are frequent in those horrible parts of Detroit, this is nothing. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, yeah. Like this is this is like daycare. It's just your run-of-the-mill drug dealers and gangbangers. <laughs> From um, California. Like, all right. You tell Gerald to take the stupid hat off because he doesn't want to get shot. <laughs> and take that blue bandana off. What are you trying to do to us? <laughs> I just want to fit in. I wonder whatever happened to Crip Killer 13. <laughs> that dude that actually played against on Xbox Live. Still out there killing Crips every day. <laughs> Reckons that he bumped into the bullets. We're going to case the joint. And we're going to, uh, until our contacts get back. And the phone rings, alerting him to our presence. Because Gerald Conway doesn't know how to put his phone on silent. We're as inconspicuous as we can be while still having a line of sight. Okay, so Eric's driving. I'm in the passenger seat. You case the joint out for about four hours. And you do see a hooded figure walking in. Consistent with the description. Stocky, about the right height. Okay. Do you guys hold off on that and wait for the next thing to happen? Or do you move in? Still trying to see if we can get a way to murder this dude from his contact. Okay. All the challenges this guy to wreck with. Actually, during that four hours, have him fire up his laptop. If it's an old shutdown boxing uh, like training facility, we can probably figure out 
through an internet search or some way how, when the building was built, we can just look for pictures of boxers from this area and maybe there will be some photos at this location. What do you want exactly? Just the layout of the inside. Eric says, or I could just pull up the blueprints from the city. Oh. oh. <laughs> I'll you'd be disappointed. He is. Uh, it's a very simple layout. You've got your big wide open area, and then you've mm -hmm. got one section that's for locker rooms. You would have a boxing ring, a line of heavy bags, some masks, that sort of thing. Uh, you do have a back door uh, and a front door. Uh, all the windows are barred up. The front you can see, the door is, you can see that it's not locked. It's just been opened and then pulled closed. Around 11.30, you get a phone call. Okay, well, phone rings. It's Ronnie. Tell me some good news, because we found him. Well, I got some news for you. If I've got this right, you need a bronze knife coated with ground up wind flour mixed with aconite and honey. Aconite. No, see, he was leaving aconite traces behind. I wonder what the relevance of that is. Well, if you've got an ancient set of books that says any different, I'm all open uh, to suggestion, but that's the best I could do. All right, bronze knife with some sort of flour, honey, aconite. All right, where are you gonna get aconite from other than the trace amounts off the bodies? Hmm. Worldwide honey shortage, you need to find some bees. On the way, it's your turn to see if there's anyone in your California network. Yeah. Huh. Networking bad, uh, check. Uh, even though you roll abysmally, you're able to find an herb shop that's also a front for hunter ingredients. Uh, you have to do it tomorrow because they're not open. Get there bright and early, I'm assuming. Now, do you stay up all night, Gerald, or do you drift off to sleep and have another murder dream? I stay up. Coffee's starting to uh, to have the opposite effect that it should. It's, it's making you paranoid instead of awake. Oh. No, screw coffee. I'm giving myself the jitters. I'm going to buy one of those, like... Um, the trucker pills? Stoop. Yeah, the energy pills, yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> you're fine. You feel great. Uh, the world's your oyster. You're able to find this place at some new age uh, hokey shop where they sell crystals and holistic remedies and they've got the normal storefront. You give them the secret password. All right, what do you need? Aconite. All right, how much? I don't know. Enough to kill a, a minor Greek god. Yep. How am I supposed to know how much that is? Here, just take, he gives you a little pouch. Good. If that's not enough, All come right. back if you're still alive. If it's, if it's not enough, I'll never see you again. You're able to get the aconite, you've got the honey, you've got the bronze knife, you've got the wind flower, you've got everything you need, you know where he is. How how, how quickly do you think we can do this, Eric? Murder a god? I don't yeah, know. Murder a god. Do we have to stab him anywhere in particular? When you've done things like this before, you want to go for center mass or the head? I only see one solution and that's the messy one because it's us. <laughs> I hope we don't have to beat him down and then carve that symbol into his own head. One of the things that he finds is that Perseus, in one of the ancient tales, was rumored to have challenged Zelos and won, getting a boon for himself. We could beat him, and if we don't kill him, we could have celestial boons. Especially this guy, especially if you come bearing a challenge, he's probably going to take a moment to gloat. Wait a minute. So I think what the plan he thinks he should go with so we don't risk anyone else's lives and don't draw any attention is you take the knife you sneak in the back i'll give you a little bit of time to get in and then i'm going to go in through the front door i'm going to do what i do best i'm going to talk at him and while i talk at him and distract him and if it gets kind of hazy i might try to challenge him to something which will probably get me killed worst case scenario if you fail on your stab where things go sideways i'm putting on the belt buckle and hoping it gives me the prowess necessary to take him down and then uh, we'll spend the next couple of days partying until I explode. What does Eric think about that? And what is a grown ass man? We've only known each other like a month. That's <laughs> always oh, why Rose heals. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he wants to do, and we can do it. And hope the best. Hope he uh, can talk shit as well as he thinks he can. You make your way to the back, and the thing is barred up, but. Mm -hmm. It's in such disrepair that it only takes you a couple of minutes to make your way in the back. Uh, you stroll in right through the front door. Yep. You see him at the center of the boxing ring. He looks up. He's a very tall and imposing man. Shirtless. Rippling eight-pack. He looks like a championship Olympian bodybuilder. Shaved bald. And he's got these very tribal-looking tattoos going down on each side of his face. Okay. What do we have here? Well, 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 I am impressed. Did you come looking for me? Uh, as a matter of fact, I did. And I had a similar question. What do we have here? Oh, please excuse me. 
I was just finishing up here. There's a man in the center of the boxing ring with him and he's kneeling down unconscious, but otherwise unharmed. He then using his hands, rips off each hand at the wrist. And then with his legs holding the shoulders together, he gives the head a strong pull, popping it off the neck with a sickening splorch. Holding the skull a la Macbeth, he places his palm on the forehead and burns the mark of the vanquished into the poor bastard. What an exciting time to live in. Do you know just how many new and exciting ways there are for everyone to measure themselves against each other? It's enough to keep a man entertained forever. Oh, what are you good at? What's the absolute best thing you can do? Hmm? Make you feel like a chump. <laughs> I, I did my research. You're zealous, right? My, my. You are you feed, you feed on the vanquished. Yet these days, you feed off high school kids and nerds? I act a champion. Uh, well, they can't all be gladiators. But they were the tops at their games. Well, not all of them, but uh, they thought they were. Well, I don't want to clip your wings, but it's not nearly as impressive these days as it used to be. And how would you have a real contest between men? Weren't for saying gloves laying around. I used to box in my day. Boxing? Mm -hmm. I'm over the hill. You're over the hill. Seems like even odds. Sure. If that's what you wish, uh, best of seven. Step into the ring. All right. He walks up to you. He puts out his hand, holding it open, waiting for you to put your hand onto his. And then the world changes. You're in a boxing arena, jam-packed. Mm. There's lights, camera, announcers, a uh, cheering crowd. You're, you're wearing boxer trunks. He's wearing boxer trunks. You've got fancy boots on. You've got a corner man. You've got a cut man. They all know you. They're cheering for you. Everything that you would expect. You get the let's get ready to rumble guy. You look good. Like you're oiled up. You got the goldenpalace.com. There's the announcements. Do I look better? Your weight. You look as good as you can look. I, so wait, do I look younger? You don't look younger, but you feel yeah. younger. You feel, I was like gonna say, you feel like you're in your prime. I went from that picture to you, Iceman. You feel, you feel well rested. Um, Eric, you hear this exchange. Mm -hmm. So you start making your way closer. I'm Gerald, the bell rings. And the first round, He's kind of doing a, a rope-a-dope thing. So his fighting score is such that uh, even if you roll a 20 and he rolls a 1, he's still going to mm -hmm. have the better of you. Now, he doesn't go out of his way to beat you to a bloody pulp. The first match lasts three rounds, and you know it's no. only because he let... One thing I want to say about this, though. Do what you got to do. I challenge him to a boxing match, but that's not what I do best. What I do best is make him look like a chump. Okay. I'm not trying to win the boxing match. I'm trying to make him look foolish. I will stumble, fall over, make him only hit me when I'm down, make him look like a cheap shot artist. I, I mean, con. I don't fight. I still can't win the rolls. Uh, if you're trying to have a con match with the guy, he picks up on that probably much by make the end of the first round. And uh, he's like, okay, that's how you want to do it. He's got a con game of 40. Oh, it's fine. That's and what I do best. So though. it's it's a con it's a con match now between you guys are both trying to uh, to rope it up each other without belaboring it too much. You you get the shit kicked out of you for three matches. The first is a three round fight. The second one is a one round uh, ass kicking. Um, pretty much he, he he kicks your ass in two punches. Damn. Yeah, it's uh it's like the the Mr. T clubber line. Can can like can I four minute up and just let him body shot me that, for a while that was your mistake like you formed it up one uppercut broke your guard yeah. and then a shot to the temple lights out but the interesting thing is between that match and the next one you wake up feeling perfectly refreshed like ready to go there's no residual damage hangover third match is not very much different fourth match he puts his hands up like come on it's not going well you're trying to hang on um, hey hey, hey call, cool your jets man it's not a competition you do <laughs> he makes you take it all the way to the 10th round because he knows you're an old man. And uh, he even t steps away from the boxing a couple times just to, to wave to the crowd and give you a chance to catch your breath because you are, you're huffing and puffing, you're a smoker. Oh, I'm a chick knee. He yeah. goes, well, it's been a lot of fun, but not good enough, I'm afraid. You and then his eyes turn black. And from top to bottom, he crackles and then crumbles into ash as Eric, standing in what is now a very dingy and broken down abandoned boxing arena, has stepped up behind him, stepped through the ropes, and stabbed him right in the back. 
Nice. You had never oh. left the boxing arena. This was an alternate mental projection where he takes his victims to compete. The only downside is, is that while he is in competition, he's in a trance, as were you, dead to the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know what also I'm good at? Stalling. <laughs> You still feel like you did before you went in, though. All that energy and in your primeness kind of kind of faded away. Now you're back to being hopped up on nervous guy trucker pills. What now? What now? Huh? Huh? I sweep this asshole up into a Ziploc, Ziploc bag. Oh, the ashes? Say. Yeah. Who knows okay. if God ashes could be useful, and if not, it's a nice trophy. If so. nothing else, you can get some, uh, you can use it for a good trade at a Hunter Black Market. A little bit goes a long way, too. Like, you've got a gallon Ziploc bag of old gods worth of ashes right um and usually spells are like a pinch of god ash which is where the fuck am i gonna get god ash hey um, i can get legitimate money for this well it's illegitimate from i'm sure the hunter stole it but <laughs> you could you could retire off of a bag of god ash i ain't gonna <laughs> you'd still get phone calls and something would probably hunt you down in the middle of the night anyways this god's got three siblings who probably aren't gonna be happy about that assuming they're still in existence Ah, sorry, they can get my band whoever's giving me horrible nightmares. Might be the demon in the trunk. Should probably get rid of that demon. At least find a place to store him. You know, <laughs> screw it. <laughs> we're going to find some place in the Midwest where nothing ever happens, and we're going to rent a unit out okay. somewhere, and we're going to ward the inside of it, and we're going to sta- tie him up super secure, stash him, super lock it. You might even have a place like that. Like, there's supernatural toxic waste dumps. With your networking score, you can find a place... Um, that's kind of out of the way where you could stash your demon, no problem. And by the way, between now and then, you do have access finally to your demon rubber stamps. Yay! Um, your, de- your, your devil trap sticks and your devil your devil's trap stickers and your devil's trap rubber stamp, which you do need an ink pad for, but it's still fun. Keep that in the utility belt. Flip, stamp, stamp. I'm just waiting that long. <laughs> <laughs> so surprised. Like, how have we never come across this before? Uh, well, celebrations are in order. Maybe a nice trip to the bar. Yep. Some good food. I'm not ruining this by trying to get orange juice. No, you guys <laughs> go somewhere fancy, not like fancy upscale, I need a suit and jacket type place, but like a, just a nice restaurant, classy bar with some good food, big TVs, attractive women. You guys get up to leave, go hunker down somewhere for the evening, and uh, Gerald has a seizure. <laughs> All right. Eric, he starts shaking. He falls down and starts doing the whole. It's all right. It's it's fine. Epilepsy. Uh, You can't. You you do more of a. No, 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 no. It's fine. Gerald's just Pentecostal. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Seizure lasts, I'd say, about 45 seconds. And then it subsides. Gerald waits for his own wallet in his mouth. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And uh, you were expecting to wake up, Gerald. No, this was an actual seizure. This was not pretend. You don't wake up screaming. You don't explode. You don't get shot. You don't get hit by a bus. Eric is next to you. You just fucking flipped out. Gerald spent almost a full minute on the ground, seizing outside the small bar and restaurant where they were celebrating their victory over Zelos, the god of competition and envy. Then, all of a sudden, Gerald saw a bright flash right before everything went dark and caused him to pass out. He stopped, suddenly shaking, and was not breathing. Come on, Gerald, we have to move! Gerald took the machete and quickly dodged the outstretched hands of the vampire, slashing wildly to keep them at bay. Millie, in full combat gear and a machete in her offhand, grabbed Gerald's arm and pulled him down the dark corridor. When a particularly nasty-looking vampire jumped out in front of her, she cleanly and effortlessly took its head right off with one swing, kicking the body aside. We should be safe in here, she said, and opened the door at the end of the hallway and pushed him through. And then everything was quiet. The noise was gone, and so was Millie. Gerald found himself alone in the woods, with the sound of the door closing behind him fading from his mind. The dead silence grated on Gerald's nerves. He couldn't shake the feeling he was being watched. In fact, the more he thought about it, he was sure he could feel the eyes burning into his back. Gerald! Gerald! Come on, Gerald! He could hear someone as though they were very far away shouting for him. Gerald! He could feel his heart pounding, pounding hard, very hard. Gerald put his hand on his chest as he knelt down in the forest, trying to steady himself. The sky turned black with thick, dark clouds in a matter of moments, and rain started to pour down, flashing lightning wildly as Gerald ran for cover. 
He could still feel the beating in his chest and hear the shouting of his name. Right as he reached for the opening of a small outcropping, Gerald found himself blown back about 20 feet as he was struck dead center in the chest with a massive bolt of light. The EMTs on the scene looked up at Eric, holding the defibrillator pads in their hands. We have a pulse! Come on, Gerald! Keep that tube stable! The other one shouted as Gerald's limp body was jostled. He continued, Keep breathing for Gerald. I think we can move him now. Get him in the back of that ambulance. Gerald was quickly thrown into the back of the vehicle as it raced away, sirens blaring. Gerald sat up in the forest and looked down at his chest, fully expecting there to be a gaping hole there. Everything seems fine and the rain had stopped. Gerald looked over when he heard a rustling of leaves and saw a cloaked figure walking towards him. The man pushed back his hood and smiled at him. You probably don't remember me, but I sure remember you. And I'm going to make you pay for what you did. You and I are going to have some fun. Shall we begin? He said right before clocking Gerald upside the head with a shovel. Fade to black. Orange County Presbyterian Hospital, where Eric is in a room with Dr. Harding. Uh, Gerald is hooked up to all kinds of machines. Uh, he's got breathing tubes and a pacing wire that keeps providing minor shocks to his heart to keep it in proper rhythm. Uh, his blood pressure is a little bit low and his O2 stats are low too, they're below 95. Compared There's worse. a doctor in the room with you, Dr. Harding, standing there beside Gerald looking at you. Eric, we, we aren't sure what caused it, but Gerald is currently in a coma and right now these machines are the only thing keeping him alive. He's stable for the moment and we'd like to run some more tests. But until then, we won't know anything new. Thanks for the update, Doc. Um, you don't mind, like a moment alone? Of course, of course. We understand this is uh, this must become as quite the shock to you. We've had some tests to run, and we'll be back as soon as we have some results to give you an update on his condition. Eric, what do you what do you want to do? How many pillows are on the bed? There's two. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> well, there goes tonight's session. Yeah. Well done. Sorry, Aaron. <laughs> I mean, Damn. Eric? Now I'll never no. know what's happening. <laughs> First thing I do is uh, I take out his phone. I want to piggyback off his uh, network and just go through his contacts. Kyle, you brilliant and sexy bastard. Um, wow. I didn't know if you were going to... I didn't know if you were going to pick up on this, and it was the first goddamn thing you did tonight. Gerald's phone is a special item that gives plus seven to all networking roles for anyone that knows Gerald. Because he said he's been having uh, nightmares constantly for well, okay. the past few uh, days. See if anyone in his uh, network uh, has heard of anything like that. After I reach out to them while they're researching or whatever, I also uh, do some of my own uh, researching group. My tech use. Gerald kind of kept this one close to the chest, so you don't have a lot to go on. What you do know is that very recently he's been having nightmares. He's been having the occasional nosebleed, which is weird. The the seizure right at the end, and according to what the doctor said, this is going to end in death. So you make some phone calls. It's a little bit slow going because hunters are a secretive, close knit group and they don't take very well to people calling them on phones that they aren't expecting to get phone calls from. So you get your share of hang-ups. Uh, don't call me on this number again. I don't know who you are, but I will kill you. But eventually, you're able to talk yourself into someone whom, and I use that word correctly, Eric, uh, you have been mentioned by Gerald so that when you say who you are, he doesn't think you're some whack job or some demon that stole his phone. You get a hunter by the name of Vance, and uh, he picks up the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is uh, Aaron uh, Hun with Daryl Conway for the past few months. Okay. He's mentioned you. Yeah. Thing is, he's currently in a coma. The current prognosis is uh, death. <laughs> so, figured uh, I'd reach out some of his contacts to uh, see if they can look into uh, something for me while I uh, try to investigate it on my end. Well, you said he's in a coma. Have you taken him to the doctors? Yeah, he's. Where did you think I get the prognosis? I was I mean, speculating. Well, right now I don't have uh, a whole lot to go on, so maybe you could fill me in. That's what's happening. Um, so <laughs> for the past few days, um, he's been having errors, and we're hunters, so you know that's that's expected. So I didn't think much of it. He's also been having uh, nosebleeds, and uh, we're hunters. I figured he might be, uh, you know, insufflating certain substances to 
take the edge off. So I, mean, I didn't uh, find that. That wouldn't be entirely out of character with Gerald. He's like, oh, okay, he's having nightmares and, you know, doing those candy, whatever, as long as he's still confident. There's no reason for me to interject. But now that he's uh, currently in a coma and uh, he hasn't suffered any significant trauma, what brings us to his current state is uh, he had a uh, massive seizure after uh, we went to the bar to uh, celebrate our most recent staving off of the apocalypse. You called the right guy. I think I have some uh, some resources that I can tap to try and figure something out. Uh, I'm gonna have to hit the books, see what this might be, but you gotta call me if you find anything else. That'll speed things up considerably. Will do. All right. And then you begin your searching on, on the internet. So I'm gonna roll your uh, roll your tech use. It's not like there's a web MD for what you guys go through. One of the things you do find is mentions of black veins inside the nose, which sounds super weird. Where you shine as a character is being able to find that one nugget of potentially useful information among the sea of crazy. You come across that post on a, on a midnight message board, and you're pretty sure the guy might be a hunter based on what he talks about, but he doesn't come out and say it because you're not supposed to do that. People think you're crazy. You do find thin black veins that are just starting to come into view right up on the insides of his nose. But, uh, that is some information that uh, you get back to uh, Vance via text message or another phone. Was part of our celebration of beating Zealous me snorting his god ashes? What the hell? <laughs> Gerald, you are currently fighting for your life. The things that happen from now on have very real consequences. If you make <laughs> too many wrong choices, your character will die. Woohoo! There are things Eric can try and do to help you, but if he does everything right and you do everything wrong, what he does won't matter. Okay. Good to know. Gerald, you wake up and your head hurts. You're in a hospital room. Eric is sitting in a chair passed out asleep. There is one door to a hallway and a second floor window that leads outside. You feel groggy, um, but like you're feeling a bit better. You hear some activity outside, low grunting noises, and then scratching at the door. Can I make a crossroads deal I forgot about? What the shit? Eric, Eric. You yeah. rouse Eric and he wakes up. What the hell? Yeah, you had a you had a massive seizure. Um, you're gonna die. Uh, oh, the noises yeah, are getting great. louder. What's going on with you? Do you hear that? Hmm? Did you hear that? The scratching. Yeah, you hear it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My gun. Hospital probably has it. The door suddenly breaks open, and several desiccated, rotting zombie corpses, corpses shamble through. Eric looks at you, tosses you a shotgun. Gerald, what do we do? Do we fight? Do we run? 